My name is Chris and I live in Ontario, Canada. I am 74 years of age and I have prostate cancer stage 3. It's my goal to try and put together a uh, little record of the various stages that I have gone through in tackling this uh, disease. Hopefully it will be helpful to others that may view this video. I have a very full life. I undertake everything that I would do in my normal life. And I have to say to you that since my diagnosis four years ago, uh, I have uh, achieved and done everything uh, that I would want to do in regular life. I've been a bit careful about foreign travel, but um, I have experienced no pain at all. And uh, in this area, um, we are blessed by having first-rate hospitals, first-rate doctors, and a health plan which basically covers everything that you would need to survive with this disease. I have always believed, since I was 40 years of age, that every male should have health checkups every year. Uh, an annual checkup at the um, general practitioner. Uh, they usually take a, a variety of blood tests. And I've never had any health history whatsoever in my life. Uh, the worst thing I've ever had was a kidney stone 20 years ago, and that's just a minor passing event. But uh, I do believe that health check is very, very important to detect early prostate cancer in men, which is, in fact, somebody said it's the female, it's the male equivalent of the female breast cancer. And the difficult thing about prostate cancer is that it is entirely pain-free. You have no sensation that you've got it until you've got it. And when you know you've got it, it may be too late to do anything about it. But uh, early detection is the absolute key. If you have access to the annual health checkup, your doctor will take a blood test and it will, one of the uh, criteria uh, of the blood test is the PSA score and the PSA score uh, is called prostate specific antigen and uh, I understand I understand and I am not a medical man at all and I have very little knowledge of medical issues that the normal score for a man is 2.0 and uh, if you're scoring about 2.0, you're probably healthy, you're leading a full life, um, and uh, there's nothing to worry about. Make sure when you do it, the, the test, that you also ask the doctor to do the finger test. And that does mean that he will insert his uh, gloved finger into the rectum, and he can actually feel the prostate and whether or not it is swollen or enlarged. And in most men, an enlarged prostate is of no consideration at all. Uh, many, many men die with an enlarged prostate that has just been an enlarged prostate all their lives. Uh, my doctor told me uh, in 28 years, he said, Oh, it's a little bit big, uh, no problem, no problem, and uh, it was no problem. Um, in the spring of 2016, I did my annual health checkup, and my results came out that they had, the PSA score had shot up from a normal 2.0 to 7.8 and uh, immediately that that the red, red flags fly when you get that rapid movement it's not just the size of the movement it's the speed of the change of the movement in the score that uh, is a red flag and requires that you do or undertake further investigation of what you might have going wrong I was immediately directed to a urologist. Had to wait, in fact, a month because of holidays before I could see him. I told him, the urologist, that I was heading off on a three-month, in September, 
2016, I was heading off for a three-month uh, journey on local bus around uh, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, and places in the Far East. And um, he made no comment to me about the wisdom of doing the trip and said, okay, well, see me in December when you get back, uh, which I duly did. Uh, in hindsight, that was not a good move on my part not to f f follow up on that. And I should actually have canceled that trip, which I didn't do. But on December the 16th, on the day after my return, I went back to the urologist and was directed to um, further blood tests. And, uh, and he directed me to a biopsy that was conducted in early January 17. The, bi the biopsy is a process uh, whereby SNP, and I suppose that's the nearest word for it, a SNP, is taken from each of these 12 areas and, uh, and it's six down one side and six down the other side. And I have to say in the whole process, that was probably the least comfortable. Not exactly painful because they do uh, as, um, anesthetize the snipping tool so you don't feel it too much, but it's just uncomfortable, but it doesn't last long. And um, I got the results of that um, uh, several weeks later. Uh, I did the CT scan and an MRI scan and also bone scan. So I was well looked after and the medical powers that be at the local cancer hospital, which is located about three or four kilometers from where I live, um, were had able to get a pretty good uh, insight into exactly what was going on in my uh, prostate. Subsequent to this diagnosis, I was given shots of Lupron, L-U-P-R-O-N, and the idea of Lupron is to subdue your hormone. Men's prostate cancer feeds on high levels of hormones, so the idea uh, of Lupron is to reduce your hormone level to as low as zero if possible uh, so that there's nothing for it to feed on. Now I'm using non-technical talk here because I don't know what the technical words for this are but that's what I understand that if you can reduce it, it doesn't cure it, it uh, reduces it. And just as a side thing that you might be interested in, when they first discovered Lupron in 1954 and it brought men's hormone levels down to zero, um, the scientists believed they found a cure for cancer, uh, prostate cancer, and uh, the, I understand that the founder was nominated for the Nobel Prize. It turned out that uh, that was not the case, it is not a cure, but it is an adjunct to other treatments that they give you. Lupron is a medication that is injected into you in uh, three, every three months. Not pleasant, there's no pain or anything, but it does mean you get the hot sweats and you get them every two hours, night and day, and it does disturb sleep. Uh, for me, and I can only talk about my personal um, you know, manifestations, uh, is that it would, uh, I, I, my head becomes very hot and wet. My wife laughs at me and she says, well, you know what, all women have to go through this hormonal change and so you're getting a good lesson in it. Well, <laughs> I understand now what women have to go through. So um, the sleep, the lack of sleep, continuous sleep, uh, was also has not been one of the most positive aspects. And even now, four years later, I only sleep uh, for two hours at a stretch, get a hot flush, it wakes me up, I urinate, I get back to sleep, and then two hours later it happens again. So anyway, you learn to live with it, and if that's the cost of this uh, drug for a full and fruitful life, I'll, I'll take that.
the period of May to July 2017, my hormone level, my PSA score, had dropped from the 7.8 uh, diagnosis time down to zero. I began to take the radiation treatments and I had 25 radiation treatments on the prostate itself and I had 14 radiation treatments for a total of 39 and that was over a, an eight week period every day Monday to Friday I had the other 20, 14 on the pelvic bone so that is rather debilitating and tiring those radiation uh, again absolutely no pain at all uh, until probably the last 10 of the 39 and it is um, a process the radiation is a process how shall I say incremental radiation and it does burn the 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 radiation waves can burn and did burn organs through which it passed in order to get to the prostate in my case it was burning of the lower intestine so it made it very painful for a period to have bowel movements as uh, the lower intestine is quite badly burned but this is this this, this uh, heals after a while and I would say after and yes it's taken me I think about three years for that to fully fully heal and to be back to um, basically no feeling at all like prior to the disease but I would counsel anyone that is going through this radiation for prostate be ready to have some discomfort for an extended period. Um, the radiation result was that the prostate was what they say has been nuked, nuked, nuclear bombed if you want, uh, and it, it basically is non-existent inside my body cavity. Some people that have prostate cancer are counseled to have the prostate removed um, because mine had spread outside the prostate uh, into the pelvic bone I was not a candidate for that I have a family member uh, that uh, had it this happening almost at the same time and um, they had that uh, complete removal and they've had absolutely no side effects at all and have enjoyed absolute health mm -hmm. following on but in my case it had spread outside uh, so for uh, because of that I became a stage 3 um, prostate cancer uh, sufferer if you want whatever the word is uh, a patient but I am at that level I continued with the Lupron as my major um, drug throughout 2017 uh, into 2018 and the first half of 2019 I had blood tests um, to measure my uh, PSA score uh, and uh, during the early part of that 18 month period I was very low, below um, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 uh, level, and doctors indicated that, uh, you know, if we can hold it at that, then it's very good. However, however, uh, I am told that in about 25% of cases, the Lupron ceases to work after, within within the two year period, at about the two year period. And that was my, uh, the result for me. Over the period up to May 2020, my PSA score with Lupron, with Lupron, had risen from effectively zero to two, to four, to seven, and back up to 10 and I was quite alarmed by this score. Um, I 
now know that some men have scores over a hundred. So, uh, but anyway, it was 10. And it's not just the score itself, I am told by specialists. It is the change, the speed of change of the score that is um, very, very indicative of how likely the uh, prostate cancer is likely to mutate and uh, metastasize, I think is the word, metastasize into other organs of the body. I was identified for as a candidate for further radiation on the pelvic bone. Now, the first kind of radiation that I received was, I don't know, a lower level of radiation, but there is a new kind of radiation out there. I don't know the medical terminology for it, but it is very specific and very targeted to the points where the cancer may be residing. So the thought was to go uh, to direct the prostate, uh, the radiation onto the nodules on the pelvic bone. However, upon further investigation, and you know, everything in medicine uh, I've learned is a matter of risk. You do one thing, there's a risk. You do another thing, there's a risk. Which is the less risk? We'll do this one rather than that one but it was determined that I was not a candidate for this enhanced targeted radiation because of the positioning of the nodules and the fact that the radiation would devastate uh, other organs and that would be more serious than what I, the nodules that I had in the pelvic bone. So that's off the, off the table, as we may say. In June 2020, I was approved for a drug called enzalutamide. And enzalutamide is given to men that are resistant to the Lupron. Uh, more typically, I believe, males are uh, prescribed abiritzone. But in my case, as I say, I was resistant to Lupron. So what I'm on now is the enzalutamide in conjunction with the Lupron. Um, I must say I'm not quite sure personally why I have to continue um, taking the Lupron when I'm resistant to it, but I am told by several of these specialists that the optimum effect can be achieved in combination of the Lupron and the enzalutamide. I take four times uh, 40 gram pills per day and uh, once a day, every day of the week. Now, just a few words for any of you uh, who have, may have interest in enzalutamide. It has been a strange drug for me to take uh, it has had an effect on my skin. It has removed my fine body hair, but it's made my skin feel different all over my body. I cannot explain how this is and what it is, but when you have it, you know it. Uh, the body, uh, the skin becomes very smooth and silky, and um, the backs of my hands and on my palms, uh, just feel different than they did before. Apart from that, it has had no adverse effects. I eat normally uh, and it, my sleep pattern, waking up every two hours has remained the same. I have had a watery, runny nose, um, and this is a mild, uh, uh, mild thing that's happened uh, uh, that I'm continually wiping my nose um, and I believe it's as a result of the uh, enzalutamide but you know can't be completely sure I hope it's just a result of the enzalutamide but it it it's just annoying indication of the drug working I think uh, another side effect of enzalutamide and probably more serious if you can say but occasionally, probably 
on average every 20, 25 days and sometimes it's once a week and sometimes it's uh, once every two months but I'd say about once every 25 days I get fatigue like I have never felt in my life before it feels like I've got a black garbage bag or a black bla blanket placed over my head and I just literally it'll hit me uh, and I almost have to run to a comfortable lounge chair and just lie my head back. And these periods of fatigue can last for, from 20 minutes to 10 hours uh, and with probably an average of two or three hours. Uh, and, doesn't, and as I say, it doesn't happen th that often, but when it does, uh, you cannot fight it and don't fight it and make sure you're not driving or doing operating any machinery it it uh, and I was warned by the specialists that this is a common effect of the enzalutamide but um, that may be helpful to people who are feeling it it's, I believe it's not in any it's not a negative thing but it's just a natural effect upon the body of the enzalutamide drug um, the disturbing part that I find about the enzalutamide is that I am told that I have to take it for the rest of my life <laughs> I can't say I'm very pleased about that well what can you do about it they say i will have to take it for the end of my life i am taking another ct scan and bone scan in a couple of months time and i would like to think that those nodules are either in recess or have disappeared and then that begs the question should i still be taking the enzalutamide but um it's been my finding with the doctors that I deal with, the specialists, that they go on the cautious side and that they're very realistic in what they tell you. They, they don't like to build false hopes uh, built on improbable outcomes. They will tell you the most likely effect of what, what, what will happen and what you should expect during the long term. Enzalutamide is a very expensive drug. Uh, it is about $3,000 a month, US dollars a month. Uh, luckily, I am covered by the health plan in Ontario, Canada, because I'm over 65 years of age. But, and I understand that, and I know from looking on the internet for this drug in the US market, that it runs at over $12,000 a month. So you could see that could be catastrophic. Uh, I find that absolutely um, horrific. I don't want to use the word criminal, but horrific that any four little pills taken once a, um, a day for each month would be about 125 pills can cost $12,000 US but there we are but I get mine gratis and for nothing under my health program and I hope that any of you listening are also covered by arrangements uh, insurance coverage that enables you to uh, not be devastated financially by taking this drug now this is a very important part of this uh, video but I want to tell you that if you do, that you, if you're over 40, you must get checked. It can save your life. Prostate cancer is a silent killer. And unless it's spotted early, it can, and it can spread throughout your body. But if you can get it early, it can be treated very effectively. Uh, you've heard my story about how I delayed it for six months and that in hindsight I believe was an error and I should have known better and I also think my doctors should have been more firm with me in telling me that I should not be going on my jaunts around Asia. Keep active when you have prostate cancer diagnosed. Don't withdraw from the world. Don't withdraw. 
keep active, do sports, uh, walk, uh, keep your interests alive. If you're a cook, do cooking. If you if you enjoy amateur photography, which is my uh, personal little hobby, uh, do that. Um, but whatever it is, keep your interest. Do not dwell on it. There's the morning, the, the sun is always going to rise and uh, there are new drugs coming out the whole time. So keep your spirits up and keep interested, keep active. Other thing that I want to leave you here with is the fact that it is bad news to being diagnosed with prostate cancer. You can't take that anything away from that. It's not good news. The good news of being diagnosed is that you have probably got a, you have got a kind of cancer that has more treatments available, more successful treatments available than any other kind of cancer with a load of new treatments coming down the pipeline. Prostate cancer is highly treatable these days and uh, there may not be a cure, but there are treatments that enable you to have a full and complete lifestyle uh, that you've enjoyed th all through your life. So um, keep optimistic, keep active. I should tell you that in most communities, major cities at least, there are prostate support groups uh, there's certainly one in my city, uh, several in my city, I think. Uh, these meet on a regular basis and um, a group of men get together and the moderator typically will invite specialists in prostate cancer from the local hospitals, from the local universities, uh, to talk about various aspects of the disease and the treatments and uh, questions can be asked and it's a, it's a good feeling to, to know that you're not alone in this and that there are other people going through it that you can talk to and that will understand just how you feel. So I encourage you to join one of these uh, prostate groups. Uh, at the moment, of course, with the great pandemic uh, COVIDs uh, in our midst, they may not be functioning as groups, but mine, in fact, operates uh, with Zoom uh, and um, we have meetings uh, that I can participate in monthly uh, throughout the year. Uh, but I do encourage you to make contact with those people. There's an awful lot of literature that they're able to direct your way to help you understand about the treatment and what you can expect at the various stages. So that brings you up to date in January and good health generally. I, I feel that I, I've got a good number of years ahead of me to enjoy doing all the things that I do, watching grandchildren and uh, children grow and advance in their lives. And I, uh, I trust that uh, it has been helpful to you, for you to listen to my, my account. I wish you all the very best of luck in your treatments and uh, thank you for listening to this video. Take care. Bye-bye.